Hello there. This is Mubali. And we are going to go ahead and do a nice little video about freeform sound design. But we're going to use a different tool than what I normally use. Most of my videos will be featuring me producing an Ableton Live. I might dust off Logic for a few things if I'm going to work specifically on a project in Logic. But I've been really captivated by this program. It's called VCV Rack. And you've probably heard, if you're following the waves in music technology and what's coming out, you've probably heard some buzz about this. And I find it to be very interesting. It simulates very well uh, the concept of a Euro rack setup where you can practice modular synthesis and there are developers that make individual modules. Most are free, but some you pay for, some I've paid for. There's a few uh, paid for devices that are already here, like the console that comes from the VCB, the actual company that makes the software itself, makes the platform. The platform itself is freeware and will always be free, which I greatly appreciate. I'm fully behind that model. But they also allow developers to, you know, charge some money for the things that they develop for this platform. And I can, I can get down with that. So I, uh, I got their console because it was a really nice way to tie everything together. And it makes it really easy to do the format that I want to do for sound design, in the, in, at least in this type of setup. What I'm aiming for when I use VCV Rack is to get a conversation of, of sorts going between multiple sound sources that are more or less interesting. I don't want to try to do too boring of stuff, but the objective for this, for me using VCV Rack is just to make my freeform sound design stage a little bit more fun. And also, I'm designing sounds that work specifically with each other. So not only am I doing freeform sound design, but I'm also sort of doing arrangement as well, where I'm creating these blocks of sounds that intimately work together. And I can use that as a forefront or at least a basis for a groove or a section in a song. So without further ado, let's go into this. Uh, for the ease of listenability, since all these sounds eventually will be put into Ableton Live as individual audio clips and further process from there, just for my own listening enjoyment, I have included reverb and delay as sends, so it can, you know, it'll be fine. I'm using the NYS. THI multi track recorder. This developer, NYS THI, is just amazing. Does some really out there stuff, and I really appreciate the efforts that this person is putting into it. Like, big ups. So, let's see. What are we going to do today? As I said, one of the uh, agendas when I use VCV Rack is to make these interlocking parts, or not necessarily interlocking, but these multi-part sequences that are independent yet can work together or they can also potentially collide. It depends on my mood. I think what we will do is not really worry about the intention as much as the experimentation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I think what I'll do is rather than just like putting in sounds or putting in sound sources first and then trying to rig those up immediately, what we're going to do is figure out who's going to direct traffic, 
who's going to control what sound plays when. And fortunately with VCV Rack, there's a multitude of ways to go about this. I think... I think it'll be fun, at least, to do something different than the previous VCV Rack videos that I've done. And we'll use something else. I'm going to go down to the Troa Soft and we're going to use the Trigger Sequencer 64. The reason why I was relatively hesitant about using the Trigger Sequencer 64 is there is quite a bit of setup that's required to get this where you want it to be. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to connect the uh, BPM. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to connect the clock. Connect the clock to the 16th notes. So what this is, is a 64-step sequencer that sends triggers, which are like gate impulses, basically. And the gate impulses are going to tell miscellaneous VCAs or low pass gates or envelope generators when to turn on and when to turn off. So now we've got what's going to play or not or we've got at least the trigger aspect going on. One of the beautiful aspects of VCV rack is that you can actually randomize and you can randomize all this stuff. So there you go. The beautiful thing, the very interesting thing I find about this trig sequencer is this pattern knob. It has 64 different patterns and even better, 16 different channels. So you can have 64 different patterns at 64 steps for 16 different sources. It'll send out 16 different sources, very interesting gates. So by doing this randomized bout, uh, amount like this, you're going to have some collisions. I think I'm going to say that I do not care about the collisions. If I was more concerned about the collisions and I wanted things to play in like a specific or not a specific order, but nothing to no two things to play at once, then I would use probably a different method or even some other tricky maneuvers from there. But since I'm deciding not to care, since we're just doing sound design and it's free form and you know, if there's collisions that are happening later on in the recording, I can just do some editing once it's being arranged, and it doesn't really matter. So let's just see what the hell we get. So I have now up to 16 different gate outputs. We're only going to use 8, because there's 8 here. I could... I could definitely use 16 and do some interesting finagling, but meh, let's not, and say we didn't. So, okay, this is the tedious part. I warn you now, if you feel like fast forwarding past this, feel free. But just to briefly explain, so 64 patterns. When you right click on the device, you get this little thing where it says randomize. There's a little key command for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag up to two, randomize, and so on and so forth.
One thing I, I do have to say would be really handy, and if the developer happens to ever hear this or watch this particular video, it would be really nice if there was a randomize all patterns. And also a randomize all channels too, but at least randomize all patterns because that would be incredibly handy for this and definitely make it incredibly less tedious. But let's continue. I'm going to intentionally leave a blank one here. Okay, so that's one. I want eight of these. This is the tedious part. Okay, that is two. Uh, okay, I mean, even if I copied this channel and pasted it into another channel, it would still be me having to change all of the patterns still. So, let's just, let's just keep going. And maybe we'll only do four for this example. And we'll do the other four in a different way.
Mind you, I don't actually really probably have to do 64 patterns. I could probably like finagle less patterns and just limit the range that the patterns are going to be changed or the pattern selection is going to work. But this is supposed to be free and unfettered. So a little setup work is okay at the end of the day. I mean, it might take some time to do all this stuff and it might seem a little boring, but I think that at the end of the day, the results are going to speak for themselves. So, you know, put a little effort into it. But if the developer is watching, make a randomize all per <laughs> randomize all patterns, please. I think the objective of this particular sound grouping is going to be leads and, you know, uh, more or less relatively busy sounds. At least for, let's say, okay. I'm just going to call it there and say we're going to use three the three different outfits, three of these that do this. Um, from there, we're just going to say, okay, okay, whatever. Uh, now, that's directing traffic for three. I think we're going to use this to direct traffic for three as well. And what I like about this, we randomize, and they also have patterns, patterns, but all the patterns are randomized too. So, I mean, it's not as many patterns as the trig seat, but if this could be, a, if that feature could be adopted into this, who doggy? There you go. Okay. So, but this sequence is only 16 steps. So, this is gonna reset every bar. All right. So now we have what's going to play when for at least six different possibilities. Um, okay, let's do something interesting. Uh, we're going to go to Hetrick. We're going to combine some gates. Let's combine this one with this one. Actually, okay, we'll just go full ham. We'll go full ham. Why not? Okay. Let's see. Okay, so it looks like these are sending trigs. They need to be probably sending gate. So we're going to use the ML trigger delay, I believe. Yeah, we're going to use the trigger delay. It's a very handy tool. And I think I need two of them. Excellent. So instead, we're going to take that gate. And now it's going to be an actual gate. Instead of a little blip trigger. 
Live trigger. Yeah, I know, I'm nuts. It's okay. Okay. So now this ore light is completely lit up all the time. What I want is the nor. So that means that at all times something is playing. Well, let's just see. Uh, we'll put a logic module in there somehow. Somebody's got a logic module. Or, excuse me. Uh, we really need a logic inverter, which we could, uh, yeah, we could use the Boolean logic, but let's see, let's use what I'm comfortable with, and this person's stuff I am comfortable with, so we're going to invert it, because he's just got an inverter, so that's, okay. That's telling me it's never going to happen. <laughs> it's never going to be something that's not actually playing. Well, okay. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's like that. So, what we're going to do... We'll still keep this in, in, in play. Actually, you know what? We're just going to have those three. And then whenever one of these three doesn't play, we'll use that nor. And then they'll be on their own. So seven... And, you know what, let's do the same thing for, I wonder if this is going to work, getting the triggers, honestly all we want is the triggers, so it doesn't really matter, <laughs> we use the triggers for that, alright, we've got eight, Things that can potentially happen from six sources. So that's pretty good. Now I think we'll have to, we still need three, like if we're going to do percussive, that's one thing, but we'll probably have to figure out how pitch is going to be played for three of these, five technically. But uh, let's start adding some sound sources. Uh, let's do a couple of tried and true methods. Simple. Yeah, let's do simple first. S simple and relatively easy. And what I'll do is, I really like the Bifaco Even VCO. Enough to the point where I will use two of them to FM itself or to, to frequency modulate itself. I also need VCA, or at least an attenuverter. So we'll just use the attenuverter. We're going to go all Bifaco here for this particular, well, not all Bifaco, but we're going to go heavy Bifaco for some of this. When I do FM traditionally, I usually like to have the carrier a carrier oscillator instead of like C4, C middle C, it's going to be down an octave. And I will set the modulating oscillator to be a couple octaves lower. So it's a quarter of the frequency. And it gets a really nice gritty buzz, especially if you're using like a sawtooth waveform. So from there... We're going to process it, and Volt makes incredibly nice filters. So I am going to use 
uh, we'll use their tangents, which is a Steiner Parker filter. It's pretty nice. And then I'm also going to use their Spank, which is an envelope generator slash VCA. I like it for the VCA aspect because it's just really nice to not have to do an envelope and a VCA separately. So I'm going to set this conservatively for now. We're going to take the gate. From okay, I don't think this is gonna be. I think this is gonna be a more fixed pitch type of sound, where the modulation is gonna come from probably the filter. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this and put it here in one, and now we'll take the output and try and through bandpass. Now, from that point, we're going to need to turn up the modulation amount from this into the FM. So you notice a change. So now we're going to need modulation, which is my favorite, 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 favorite. I know I said that a lot. Favorite thing to do. Static sounds are boring. I will repeat that. Static sounds are boring. You need to have some movement in your sounds to keep things interesting. So... Let's do that. Let's create some modulation. So here's a couple of things that automatically I know I'm going to want to do. I know that this is getting moved and maybe some envelope, the, uh, the VCA, the, basically the amp envelope might get some modulation too. I haven't decided whether I'm going to fuck with the pitch or not. We'll see. I might mess with the uh, modulation amount or the mod index in this particular case. Uh, but we'll see. Haven't decided yet. First order of business is to think about modulation sources. So since I'm dealing with a multiple part pro uh, multiple sound concept that I'm trying to work with, I should probably use a combination of specialized individual modulation sources, but also some global modulation sources that tie things together. So, one of the best ways to get a global modulation source going on is to introduce some sort of multi-part LFO, where it's got you know, either several phases of itself that are coming out or, you know, multiple random things that are coming out. So, uh, toss in this one because I like it and so what it does is it's an LFO but it's going to output different phases of that same LFO and it's just a simple sine wave so this is going to be a nice shared source that we might modulate we might not we'll see 
let's also throw Huta. So many things. So many choices. You can get lost. You really can. But as you play around with the different things, you will start learning which ones work better for you and which ones don't. Let's see here. Probably not the carrot patch. I think I probably want the March Hare. Nope, that's just clocked in primarily. I mean, I would have a purpose for this if I wasn't already doing a dedicated clock. If this was more freeform, this would be excellent. But we're going to use Hot Bunny instead. Because Hot Bunny and... Because I know this is going to be something I'm going to need. There's a sample in hold eight. So I now have eight sample and holds, which is going to come in incredibly handy. I'm going to set up four of their inputs from Hot Bunny. One two from here and we're going to get now modulus Perlin I think to handle the rest and we'll use hot bunny to modulate the speed of the Perlin And the amplitude, just because that'll be fun. And we'll get some cross-modulation going on here. Still means that I can offset some stuff here. Now, this has got some wild stuff going on. Those are eight sample and holds that I can use. And I'm going to use six of them right now, just because the easiest thing to do is to take each of these trigger sequences and route them to there. not you, and we're going to use your, all of you. So we have now eight different sample and holds. Why would you need eight sample and holds, Greg? Here's why. So there's also, since I don't, in this particular case, we're going to use the ASR, which is an analog shift register. This thing is Awesome. I will repeat. Awesome. Okay. What it does, it's it takes an input source and when it receives a clock, it will take that input source and pump it out of an output of the output. Well, Okay, so that's kind of like a sample and hold, right? Yes, but after it's done pumping out of one, then that same output's going to go to two, and then it's going to go to three, and it's going to go to four, or however many stages your analog shift register is. So you can have the same sequence going to four different things, and they're all going to be offset by one clock pulse. So you can have these kind of chasing melodies. If you wanted to like put a melodic sequence through it, like a, a, a single melodic sequence, for instance, you could have it chasing itself from four different instruments, which is cool. Like you can get some interesting, similar, uh, almost counterpoint action going on with an analog shift register. But in this particular purpose, we're just going to do it the 
boring way. Not boring, but this is the standard tried and true method for using this. So I think I have decided that I am going to modulate the amount, the mod index. So I'm going to get rid of this. Go to Bifaco again and the A times B plus C. Oh, it's a little bit big. Let's just scoot everything over just a tear, just a hair, just a tag. Scoot it in, close it up. Hagen dies. Okay, so now we are going to reroute it. So this is going into A. The output is going into the FM. And it's going to be A times B plus C. So A times B. And we're going to leave C at zero because we're not going to need to offset it necessarily. So now we can take two and we're going to route it to the filter. And we're going to take three and uh, route it to the release going in the negative. And let's see what we got. Okay, so we got something. Let's turn up the delay and reverb just to make us feel more comfortable. So we got one. Seven more to go. Let's put a blank panel in here just for... I don't even need a big. I just need a tiny blank panel. Yep. That's all I need. Just, just separation. So that's voice one. Let's work on voice two. will go pretty easy. Let's use Audible. We'll use the resonator. And I need the eight part shift register for this one. We'll take in from two. You know what, for two, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll use... We'll use that. Let's see what's going on.
this actually presents a dilemma. The way that the resonator works is it actually will sound, create sound when it's getting things through the volt per octave. But if you look at the pattern, the gating doesn't actually equate with that. So how do we go about dealing with that situation? I'll show you. This is actually an appropriate use for a sampling hole. So I'm gonna grab a S and H and just grab that one. And we'll take the input from the volts per octave and the trigger is gonna come from there. And instead of all that mess, we're gonna take it and now let's see what we got. Much better. relatively interesting. One thing I did do recognize is the fact that I haven't quantized anything to, to a scale. So maybe we'll try that. Uh, I think I have something for that. Q-A-N. Yeah. And this one's like kind of like a global one. So everybody will get, I can just. Uh, I think the track I'm working on for the video is like. The C, it's like the CE, the, the ACE area. You know, let's just leave it C. And. Let's uh, 
major. Just to make things easy. So, that I believe was going like this. So, that alone should probably help. Okay, so that was an easy voice, so we will duplicate it, duplicate that little barrier. The barriers are just for my own needs, honestly, just so I know what's what. So voice three. Uh... Anyway, um, yeah, 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 okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep it relatively simple for this, because since we're doing eight voices, we have to be a little bit economical on our processing power, since I don't have the most badass of machines. So, it's actually pretty funny. We're gonna use the shift register from here to modulate this thing, honestly. Just because it might be fun. And we'll do the mod CV amount from there. Output's going to go into here. We're going to be in three. And we'll take the gate from output two now.
Take a short break, and then when we come back, we're going to make three more sounds, okay? <laughs> 